Welcome to the drunken Tarask, where, well, dear God in heaven, I think the world is ending. No, no, that's just things normally. That's like that's just how things are for us now. <laughs> <coughs> well, today we're going to be talking about gothic or dark and gritty universes we'll and books. Gritty. We'll just call it dark and gritty. Yeah. That's, that's just what we're gonna get at today. Is but the funny thing is, let's let's face it, things are never gonna get really dark and gritty. Things we're we're just gonna get about you know close to edgy. That's <laughs> That's where we're gonna get to. <laughs> well, anyway, but what it is is with today, Rachel ran across someone who had said that they didn't want to get into dark heresy. Well, then, okay, not just dark heresy, but Warhammer Forty K. I think they said that they liked the lore, but they were just sort of. I think they were. They were like, I don't know who I should root for. Like, who who I root for exactly here in Warhammer 40k? And I think the the answer is, I guess, yourself. Because everybody is kind of a little bit awful. But there's there's a lot of different ways to pursue it. Um, but here's, here's the situation. I, I don't think that it's bad to pursue a gritty story. I just think that the aftermath of doing so is just going to end up... Um, <laughs> it's going to end up Monty Python no matter what you do. It's just going to end up being darker. Well, I mean, well, 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 and I understand where Rachel's coming with this, and this is kind of my philosophy. People don't want to get into dark heresy, complaining it's too dark, they don't have anyone to root for. And, and I can understand that if you've come from the Forgotten Realms, the essentially window wiper fluid levels of cleanliness type of perspective on things, you start thinking, well, why, just, like, why do I want to play this? It's like, it's going to be depressing. It's going to be, who do I vote for? Who do I go for this? Everyone's evil. It's like, no, 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 no. You're looking at it from the perspective of everything has always been perfect in your life. When you play Dark Heresy or these darker and grittier worlds out there, you are given a lot more ammunition, and, uh, and it's also refined your direction and makes you think on your characters to begin with. Um, my favorite thing is... You know how people love using magic in all these worlds? Well, magic is used by psychers in this world. And they're not exactly the well-loved people. Yeah, because they can unmake reality by one mistake. I would imagine that that would not be popular at parties. Well, it's I, like, oh, hey, guys, you know, if I, all I need to do is just turn this water into wine, and, like, next thing you know, the wallpaper is peeling, and, and the walls are bleeding, and... <laughs> Well, and, and, and that's the thing, is that what Rachel described is very similar to one of the events they went through in one of my games with them. And the biggest thing is, for me, everyone had a good laugh at it, because they made that exact kind of joke afterwards. Because a good, gritty world knows when to let the humor slide through. This is very much with nuance. I think when you look at a gritty environment... Um, you gotta you gotta look at how your character survived in this, and people start going for the very simplistic, very cold-hearted edge lord. Like no 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 no. Like that that that's a good for a first time run, but you start realizing very quickly, that's not how you're gonna do it. You're not v looking for yourself. The biggest thing with a game like this is a, a universe like this. You start thinking in a completely different mindset. What are your responsibilities now? Why would you be thinking? It's dark and gritty. I want to think of... No, no, no. You, you think on your responsibilities. Who are you responsible for and to? Most of the time in gritty worlds, you're responsible to yourself. You're responsible to your teammates even more. You're usually responsible to an organization, good or bad. And it's already built your character before you've even stepped into it. And you don't even realize it. And it actually makes you think, oh, do I want to be a person who is in this hive in this hive who's trying to maintain law and order, stopping people from eating each other, stabbing each other, gunning each other down, and being that thin line that stops everything devolving into chaos? Like, that's a lot of responsibility that comes with all these cool challenges that, y I'm going to tell you, yeah. you don't get in the normal systems because it doesn't have that refined focus. I would want to add, I do, I do actually want to add something. And the thing that I actually want to add... <laughs> 
is the fact that you know that you actually can play an edge lord in this game, and it can be really funny. What you can just do is try to be as stereotypical as humanly possible to a comedic to comedic effect. Mm-hmm. Like you just just go over the top and do the, and do the silly thing. And well, oh, uh, my cat has decided to grace us with his presence. Well, th- well, that's the thing when it comes down to a game like this, is that that funny part. These type of systems, these type of worlds, actually give you more ammunition to have funny parts. Not only from the mental nature of a of a player, because you're gonna need that release valve. You also have another spot in your head that is going to pull greatly. Um, because in grittier worlds, you're going to, as a DM and as a player you're going to let your characters have those release valves, and they become more natural. They're not essentially the cliche of D&D, oh, I'm going to drink my beer, I'm going to roll some dice. Like You start realizing that downtime is going to be more integral to how you play and roleplay your character and how you work in this world. Because, guess what? Like If, you're, if your character's kind of concept of a downtime is mugging people let me go for like the full-blown cold evil one that's a story possibility that's going to open up to a great many things now i mean one of the bigger things is for me one of the powers of a dark gritty world especially dark heresy is it's episodic it's very episodic where you can kind of get away with having a wacky adventure every so often thrown in there for a lark that actually would be really funny but I, I, you know, I do really think about this, and I, I think that what it comes down to with the whole gritty storytelling thing and whether or not you should do it is that it comes down to about, I think, two different kinds of players. People who play specifically to forget about all the bad stuff in their life, and people who play because they really just like telling a story no matter how dark. And I think that's really what separates things here because i know there's there are people who are afraid to go and do the dark gritty stuff because you know there are people who get really uh, upset by the subject matter because i mean if you're seeing like dead burnt bodies everywhere you know that only happened once that you know of (laughs) okay (laughs) but what i'm saying is that you know i guess it's not everybody's cup of tea and i i understand that but I think that the, um, the, how do I say, I, I think it's, it's worth it. I think it's, it's worth the, the dark stuff. I think it's, it's worth it to have a better story because it's, it becomes more interesting. And it's like you said, because what ends up happening is you have to think harder about what your actions are going to do because they mean more mm-hmm. because any wrong move you could die. It's incredibly lethal. And we, a lot of newer players aren't going to be familiar with the level of lethality that are that is uh, present in the older mm-hmm. games. They're well, not going to be familiar with it because it's not there. Well, here's new- here's one of the other things. When you worry about of some people just want to relax, well, this is something you don't see from the other side when you're a player. A good DM, or maybe or maybe it's just me. I freak out and stress out before every single game. It's just my personality. If I went by that concept, I just want a relaxing game, the game would never have been played. Because it's more relaxing to do nothing, not have that responsibility. But after every session, I get the sensation of fulfillment, like I've done something good, I've made my friends laugh, have an enjoyable time. This is why, like, this is a great idea, a great thing to touch on. You may think, oh, there's too much responsibility. No, 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 no. Don't run from that responsibility. This will encourage you and make you ha- be, have a better, be a better player and have a better time. Because you start understanding, like, okay, I get to do these things, it's stressful in the moment, and then once you succeed in it, you start going, oh my god, this was so fucking good even if it's a dark and gritty world, because you start realizing, I actually mentally, through my character and myself, overcame this obstacle that felt insurmountable. It was terrifying in the moment, and you start after the moment, you will have that memory, and you won't forget about it. Just like when you, um, some police officer in in one of our games made a dumpster baby. Oh, the dumpster baby. I remember that dumpster baby. Yes. 
That yeah. was fun. That's that's the thing. That's the thing. We we have these memorable moments from the darker games. You remember those more. Um, I'd be more worried that there wouldn't be that there won't be any any um, memorable moments in these newer systems. Oh. That you'll have a game and you'll kind of remember that you did that once, but you. <laughs> Well, it's well, an experience you get to have together. Well, well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is like our game. The biggest thing I know that some people are going to remember. You guys already know the first possible character that you might have to worry about is the guy that literally ate a heart, and our cobalt friend is collecting hearts and heads for him. Like you guys already are. Like, oh god, damn it. Yeah, I mean, our cobalt just likes to feed everybody. You know. Let's- Let's just make friends with, all, with the whole neighborhood. You know, this is this is a dark, messed up fucking gift basket here. Like, why can't we just get him muffins instead? No, no, here's just a big basket of hearts. But yeah, Still but but, hearts. but that's the thing. Is like right then and there, all I had to say was that I didn't even have to give the character's name, and Rachel immediately, bam, had that, and already knows all the stuff, like the possibilities. And guess what? I'm gonna tell you something. I can tell you, Rachel. Remember the escape route where you use the inter- uh, Brandon used the entrails to swing across a, a gap. Oh God, that was great. Okay, you you see where I'm going with this? Like yeah, these I these are little these are little dark moments in a dark game that have already. Rachel's smiling and beaming over well, here because I'm smiling, you know. I'm smiling here because these things are great, and these these things right here are precisely what a lot of people are trying to get rid of. Uh, in tabletop because they say it's you know toxic and bad or, and everything like that but like these are like friends at a table you can go as dark as you want that's the great thing about all of this stuff i mean if you want to to put in these messed up things that is totally fine they know what they're getting into but i think here's here's a fun thing i think that really what people should do if they're going to have a really super hard gritty game and i've told this to you mike mm-hmm. um before i think one of the best ways to do it is actually have a setup to give everybody an idea of just how bad things can get hit your players early on with something really dark and really messed up and it's because it'll it'll set the stage you'll realize oh it's all downhill from here so like introduce a red shirt of a character or something. oh you, you mean oh, like that my... you mean like that drow that i had hang himself oh god that was awful Oh, um, no, but... <laughs> right then, you already see that, like, you can already hear her, like, all the memories are flooding back. <laughs> oh, no. That's what I'm saying, is, like, make the character memorable, or do something, like, destroy the starter town. Do something to let them know this is not gonna be, like, sunshine and rainbows and happy little butterflies. No. Things are really screwed up now, and they're screwed up for a reason, and there are people who are responsible, and now you have the motivation to move forward and take them out. And do what you need to. Well, and that's the other thing. Um, This will also help and teach you how to make better villains in the long term. Because, I'm going to tell you something, when you run it, if you've ever played in a dark and gritty game or have done that, you have to start thinking on, how do you make this? Uh, how how do you make a good villain? And when you move away from playing a gritty game, let's say you start playing the more sanitized, your villains in those other systems, those other games, will be infinitely better because you've had to thought out the, the a darker perspective, and then you can start wheel, having them actually seem like they live in the world. That's kind of how I work my villains in there. It's like I go from a very dark, gritty place, and it's come down to my experiences of running dark and gritty games and... Most people will remember my evil characters because there's some part of humanity that will freak them out. But, you know, the funny thing is that what we're what we're talking about are things that people do really want to get rid of. And the funny thing is, the reason why I say, you know, start at the beginning, I think there are a lot of DMs who are worried about newer players, and there's a lot of reasons to be worried about having new players at your table because they may not understand precisely how things go and if you're absolutely not if they if they have no sense of how things are going to be and you hit them with that in the beginning and they don't show up for next game you understand what Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know that they were not going to be down for what was going to happen afterwards 
And and you shouldn't have to have that. You shouldn't have to do things that way. But unfortunately, we there are situations where you do go through session zero. You do let people know precisely what's going to happen in the game and how dark things are going to be. But then they sit down at the table and they're just not going to be nearly as committed or they may not be down with what's about to happen. And so the answer to that question of whether or not you should just accommodate them is no. Like, if the rest of the players are down with this, why would you change everything just for the one person? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, just, like, they can sit that one out, and they can come back for the next one that's going to be sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> well, I mean, here's one of the other... Th- it. Well, here's one of the other things. It's a yin and yang philosophy with these gritty worlds. This is This is why... New people, when they start trying to grapple with playing a gritty world, they jack it up far beyond, and they think it should stay there all the time. It's Most of the gritty games have a better ebb and flow with the dark side of things. Because when you start... Okay, like like for example, the game I ran, I think, and then this is to uh, make, make Rachel remember, is that you saw the slums, you saw what it was like, you everyone saw it. But it was never beyond what they could handle. I'm not one of those... And this is the great thing about grittiness, is that when you do it right, it adds a great flavor. And when players start doing stupid things in it, it really, A, can get out of hand, but it also leads into you've turned the whole city into a massive dumpster fire and you're trying to survive it. And everyone gets that moment feeling of, Oh my God! What the hell did we do? Oh my God! Are we going to survive this in this epic fashion? That again, you don't get that feeling in generic fantasy worlds or poorly constructed fantasy worlds like Forgettable Realms. Yeah, and keep in mind the themes and stuff that you can touch on in tabletop are things that you're not going to necessarily be able to find in video games today. You might be able to, but these days, if you go to, if you go far enough. One of two things will either happen. Either people will try to ban the game, or, or, it'll be, like, people will, it'll become so infamous that everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. But, or both can happen. But that's the situation, is that it becomes infamous, people want it, but they can't get it anymore. But here you have the ability to create an experience that only you and your players and your table can experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I... And here's a, here's the situation is you know precisely what you're signing on for, especially if you're doing something like Warhammer 40k. You know you have a general idea of what you're signing up for. It, it tells you um, in introductions and things like that. If you're getting down, if you're about to go down for a Call of Cthulhu, you you understand that there are going to be some really screwed up things. People are going to die. There's going to be crazy cults. Some women are going to get raped by fish people. Like Cthulhu is going to come there and maybe suck out your soul. All that stuff's built in. <laughs> it's just like, mm-hmm. there there are so many things that are built into the world, and I, I understand there are people who would be upset by these things, but here's what I don't get, and here's what I I really would like to express before I, I, I bring things back over to you, Mike. <laughs> um, if you hate these things, if these things are absolutely awful, instead of being... Of worry, being worried about being upset or getting triggered or something, why can't you just use this as motivation for your character to take down whatever it is is causing this and to fight against it with all your might? That's what I don't understand. Because in, in the real world, these things happen. These these kind of, maybe, maybe you're not getting a rick by fishermen, but <laughs> I'm saying... In, uh, if you watch The Shape of Water, life, you do. No, no, she raped the fish man. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that in the real world, these awful things happen. And if those things anger you, why don't you just use this as an opportunity to be in a space where you can just destroy the hell out of it? To take out whatever it is that just pisses you off. Like, you have that opportunity. Why are you missing it? Because you're upset. That's that. Uh, there you go. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know you're rant, you're ranting, but it's it's okay. But no, one of the other things for me is there allows to be some really interesting dark moments. This is why, again, for dark and gritty, I like. 
one of the systems I love coming back to. This is my first love. Far, it's like it's not D and D. I love D and D. D and D was my first system I ever properly played, but it's not my first love. It's L five R, and when you have when you understand grapple with grittiness, you can actually build a very interesting world that players want to get in and want to grapple with. Like, one of the concepts I threw to Rachel, uh, asking her thoughts on that she thought was, oh, like, God, this was really dark, was that there is this whole love story concept, and what had happened is uh, this guy lost his love, who was another crane, this is L5R, sorry for the tangent, but there's a point to this, I, I, I promise you, and he's going to be betrothed to another clan. My darker, grittier angle, which Rachel hated and loved at the same time, was the love of his life as a kid, the father, to make sure the alliance would go through so there would not be eloping and him breaking a uh, tradition, was to make sure the love of his life was killed to maintain the honor and peace and stability between two clans so they wouldn't go to war. Rachel herself said, oh my god, no, but not in the way of bad idea, but like, oh my god, no. It makes sense. It flows. He is dark. It is gritty. But it's not just pure evil. Which is terrifying. And Rachel's stunned in silence. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Yeah, the thing is it works, but it's... It adds a whole... A whole other level of ruthlessness to the kind of person who would do that. And mm -hmm. it explains the desperation of that character then. So it, it's it's interesting. I would say that actually adds something to it. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I'm saying is, on the one hand, you're, you're torn because these are awful things and you don't want them to happen to your character. But at the same time, you know that if you add those things, it can lead to character growth. And that is what you desperately need to keep the story going, keep it flowing, mm -hmm. keep it moving along. Is you need to have that character growth, you need to have the characters have their moments, mm -hmm. and things like that. And that is what tabletop gaming is all about. And it's great. I know. I know. We probably didn't. Uh, I'm really hoping that this is a this is a show that people do do appreciate. It. <laughs> well, oh, oh, this this, this, well, that's the thing. Is like that whole concept of that story. In, and this is the way when you understand a gritty world and the, the darkness that comes with it, in a story like L5R, that action, though bad, is understandable. And for good character growth, if that, other, uh, if that young crane found out that's what his father did, he has two choices. Break off mm -hmm. the marriage and, cause, and most likely cause an irreparable war between two very powerful clans or swallows his pride, keeps it secret, and does d dutiful honor to his family to maintain peace between two clans. That is a, an eternal struggle. How would you live with yourself? That is epic storytelling, which would yeah, never be possible that, without dark that dark aspect. And that is the reality of, of tabletop gaming and what's wrong with the direction that it's going. I mean, I know I brought it back to it, and I'll, I won't dwell on it for too long. But it's, you have to let things happen to these characters. You have mm -hmm. to be willing to put the player, the players and the playable characters through things. Otherwise, it's just boring. It falls flat. Like, that's one of the reasons why I think what we've been noticing happening, or what I've noticed happen, is that a lot of games don't go to completion. You're, you're playing a D&D game, or you're playing Warhammer, or you're playing Pathfinder. You're playing something. And sooner or later, just people stop showing up. They start making mm -hmm. excuses. And they get bored. Action. Yeah, they get bored. And it's because you're not willing to put them through stuff. You're not willing to, to have things happen. Um, NPCs have to die sometimes. Um, big monsters have to come and maybe hurt the, the playable characters. Like, shit has to get real. Like I, like, I can't convey that enough. But I think people, do, they just get too afraid to go there because I think they're they're worried about players leaving or 
they're worried about. Well, that's like, the thing is, well, things that don't matter. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, th- well, this is the power of the the dark quote unquote the dark side of the a. Th- well, I, I'm putting it like that because the thing is, when you really look at this stuff, you you're 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 actually going to learn to be a build a build something better. Now, one of the concepts with the dark and gritty world is that those two options I told you of does he start a war? Or does he swallow swallow this knowledge? Like these are two. Like the end result are two very powerful, important emotional concepts that the player or players will be fighting over or dealing with, and they're both of them are equally important to do. Both of them are equally important to to fight for. Neither one is honestly better. If you really sit down as 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 an objective person looking at this, you either have a war, but you bring the truth of the matter to the people and seeing what this monster have, has done and maybe remove him from power because he might do this again. But if you do that, you have a world a war, a war that might just kill hundreds of thousands of people and wreak havoc on so many things. It's like, what do you do? It's like, how do you weigh this in the balance? And that's the drama. The right, I don't like using the term drama, but that's that's the right way of putting it. Well, there's nothing wrong with actually having things happen. I know that people are worried about things being melodramatic, and that is a that is a decent concern. You don't want to think things to be too overkill. But if you don't do anything at all, that's even worse. Like, I would rather have a game be melodramatic than have nothing happen at all. <laughs> that's, I don't know. Maybe it's Maybe the melodrama is worse. It depends to what level. Like, I think it can get to a point where it's like, uh, you start cringing. And you're like, Jesus, really? Yeah. But but you understand where the intent is. It's not that you're pushing it so far beyond, but it's like you got that right balance, and you got those moments for that cold, cool, cold down that you're going to be laughing at afterwards. Well, this is a really interesting topic. I really do want to talk. Do more uh, episodes like this where we talk about more of the different facets of this, the different kinds of. Mm-hmm. Dark and gritty games, ideas for dark and gritty games, um, things like that. I really do want to continue doing that sort of thing. <laughs> like, would you agree? I think. Oh yes, I think I think we can agree that we'll do this again in the future. future. Definitely, but but for right now, this is a nice introduction. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys for listening to us. We hope you join us again. And if you like this, like, subscribe, uh, follow us on the twitters, <laughs> all the things. Thank you. Okay, thank you and good night.